Well, hello and a very warm welcome to Business Today TV. I am Chetan Budani. Today, I am joined by a very special guest for an exclusive interaction, uh, Mr. Sunil H. Talati, Chairman, Services Export Promotion Council, uh, Apex Body, and the Ministry of Commerce for all things related to export services. Thank you, Mr. Talati, for joining us on My uh, Business Today TV. Uh, so, uh, congratulations! You have a huge Tela target now on your head uh, for achieving uh, services exports worth 350 billion dollars. Uh, which indicates a nearly growth of about 40 percent. How do you plan all of this? Yeah, it's a very good question because earlier when the target was around 200, 225 billion, and when we crossed 250 billion, ministry was extremely happy, and we all had in our mind that a target of 300 would be fine. But ministry has asked us very clearly, saying that no, your target should be 350 billion dollar for March 23. And this is in line to keep that, yes, by March, 20, March 2030, they want to cross 10, uh, I mean $1 trillion and to achieve the aim of Honorable Prime Minister of 5 trillion economy. So definitely it's a huge uh, target, but certainly achievable. It is not that it is not achievable. Because some oh. of the sectors which are affected very badly, say for example, medical, MVT, medical tourism, hotel and transportation, hotel and tourism, those four or five sectors, and to some extent education, those will be now coming up. You can see that all planes are full, no tickets are available in flight, and all hotel bookings are doing good. So with this growth and the boost that is we see in the market, I am confident that 350 billion target, which Honorable Minister Sri Piyush Goelji has given us, we will be in a position to achieve. Right. Uh, so, uh, don't you think the focus should be on, are you correctly in fact pointed this out, but I completely agree that the focus should be on the on, on the on the sectors which were badly affected in the last two years due to the pandemic. Like, the, like, like for example, uh, uh, the, the travel tourism sector was especially in a very bad shape. Uh, how do you plan to revamp that sector with, uh, through the exports and what all other sectors are you particularly focusing on except the travel tourism and medical tourism, of course? Yeah. See, out of 12 champion service sectors, we are focusing mainly on six to seven sectors. And as I told you, besides medical, medical tourism, hotel and transportation and tourism, we are heavily focusing on legal. We are heavily focusing on accounting and auditing and architecture and engineering. And these particular areas are definitely going to help us. In fact, we are today going to enter into an MOU with one of the leading uh, association who are dealing with the architectural area of services. Coming to my own profession, first being chartered accountant and past president of institute, let me tell you, we see a great, great future for KPO work of accounting and auditing in India. And I can share with you that earlier it used to be only work coming from U USA. But since two, three years, it is coming in a big way from UK. And off late, it has started coming from Australia and New Zealand. Right. So it is particularly two countries, UK, Australia, and New Zealand. If larger work is coming and chartered accountants are focusing to do accounting and auditing work, we see a big leap jump in that service. Secondly, right. legal. On 14th of this month, next month, 14th of May, we are having an international arbitration debate at Vigyan Bhavan. Instead of Singapore, we want international arbitration to come to India. And if that is happening and that is becoming successful, even to some extent, we see a very big inroads in that area also. So, but to get uh, international arbitration uh, companies to come to India and set up their base in India and eventually start practicing and uh, getting more clientele out of India would require a lot of uh, uh, changes in the, in, the, in the meritocracy and uh, having a lot of, uh, to avoid confusions uh, to, so as to say to get international arbitration companies to India. Uh, except the exports, yes, but a lot of things need to be streamlined in India as well. So, what do you think can be done? No, I appreciate. See, there are two, three questions involved in that. One is jurisdiction, whether right. jurisdiction falls in India or not. Second, the competence. Hmm. Now, once government support is there and government has promised us to give out and out support for this area, hmm. if the jurisdiction and the so many foreign companies coming in India are happy to settle their disputes, if any, in hmm. Indian territory, then we see a great future in that. 
Let us accept the ground reality that many Indian lawyers are going to France and Singapore for international arbitration. So competence is already available. Area and work is also available. But the foreign exchange is not coming, which we now want to come in India. That is point two. And point three is, yes, besides legal, we are focusing on, as I told you, architecture and designing area also. Okay. Simultaneously with animation in film industry. So we see a great future. Government is also saying that in animation, India has a lot of potential and we have good uh, expert youngsters in that. Many startups is coming up in that area. So in, in that industry also, we see a very good potential and maybe I would say substantial expansion. Recently, I met a youngster who is in that particular area of animation whose turnover was 0.50 million. And I asked him, what will be the turnover next year? Normally, it would be double. Instead of one, from 0.50 million to 1 million, he said it will be 2.50 million. Wow. So that is the growth he is expecting in his own small business. So like this, there are many youngsters and startups who are look, uh, looking at a very great potential. And therefore, I think uh, export in those areas will see a significant growth. Uh, so you, you, I was, uh, I was looking at the sector-wise projection. There's been a huge focus on other business services, telecommunications, computer, and information services, and thirdly, transport. Uh, telecommunications, computer. You just mentioned about how, for example, an animation industry is under huge demand. What about the other businesses, services sector that you are targeting? Any particular two to three areas where you are looking at? No, so that's a point which I must answer very honestly. This is for the first time in the history of SAPC that almost we have members from almost all the sectors. And our CGC is now full of 16 members. So we have now asked every single representative of respective sector to focus on their respective area and see the membership is grown in that area and export is grown in that area. Hmm. So we have given each member a target. And give the advertisement. Say, for example, I am given that in a chartered accountant journal, which is published every month, I will give advertisements and articles by which chartered accountant will become member in SUPC and they will start exporting accounting and auditing work. Like that, for medical, in medical tourism, we have asked their medical magazines that how new hospitals, subsequently paramedical hospitals and nursing uh, uh, services are taken care of. Hmm. In education, we are working. Dr. Vidyaji from Symbosis, who is our member, she is also working in a big way. And we see some good progress in that also. So like that, particularly in hotel industry, for example, I attended the conference of IOTA. And Mr. Sarkar, who is representative, representing this sector, is very hopeful that substantial benefit would come. They have asked government to give some relief in GST. Maybe this exemption of GST is in the hands of uh, governing council. So they may not give 18% exemption straight away to all foreigners who come in the stay in the hotel. But if government is reimbursing me the same GST by way of incentive, it would be a great boost. So let me tell you, we have met almost six to seven times various ministries representatives, DGFT ministry representatives and honorable minister also. And we have been assured, I can use the word, that yes, government is looking very positive mm -hmm. to hold our hands and see that incentives are introduced back. They would not be in the same manner. They would not be in the same quantity. They would not be in the same name. So they have asked us to think out of box and give suggestions sector-wise, which sector should be given what incentive and why. So that detailed exercise is going on. By end of the month, we will be in a position to submit the same to ministry. And we are hopeful that when the next foreign trade policy is coming out, appropriate care will be taken to uh, give appropriate incentives to various sectors. Right. So uh, you just mentioned about uh, working with DGFT and other related ministries. Uh, another ministry of commerce, of course, the DGFT, the DGTR, and you are three particular bodies who are uh, very closely related to give relief to the domestic industry. For example, the DGTR and the DGFT both look at how the domestic industry can be given relief by the way of anti-dumping duties and all. Uh, don't you think there are there, there, there is more scope to work all of the, for all of these three agencies in particular to work together with combined synergies 
uh, to have uh, uh, to, give, to give out more relief to the domestic industry, thereby indicating and supporting them for better export growth. It's an excellent point, and I would endorse and I would say yes. The, the movement has started. Let me share with you that now we have a common portal. So every single member of SEPC has to go to DGFT portal only. Right. His membership, his fees, his sector, everything will be simultaneously available to DGFT. So we are working hands in hand with that. At present, we are certainly at a premature stage, but your point is well taken that we have to work in a great cooperation and coordination so that I can even be honest that even data are sufficiently not available. Absolutely. There are many areas where we don't have, or DGFT doesn't have appropriate data. Data is only with RBI. And RBI data are not being shared either with DGFT or with us. Mm. And there is lack of coordination to some extent. You are very right. But we are working on it. Our uh, Director General Abhay is also working very hard on that. And we hope, yes, in a shorter time, we will be in a position to work with a better coordination. And that's great to hear. Uh, now I'll move on to the impact on the services export sector. Uh, what has been the impact due to the Russia-Ukraine war and which all areas has been exposed uh, with the countries going at war? No, if you ask me as a chairman and the details I have, as of now, even after 63 days of war, not much impact has happened to any service sector except IT sector. IT. So far as the Ukraine is concerned. All other sectors are independent. Medical tourism was not affected through Ukraine or education and others. In fact, students were going to Ukraine rather than things coming to India. So all those sectors are not that, as of now, not badly affected. And yeah. in, in fact, some of the uh, sectors like tourism, as I said, people who used to go to Ukraine for tourism are now coming to India mainly to Srinagar and Northern India. And a lot of tourism is there. I inquired and I found out that in entire Srinagar, there are no rooms available up to 30th June. That is a rush we see. Right. right. My final question. So foreign trade agreements are great means to boost exports. Uh, what FTAs are you focusing on as a CPC? And uh, you, I think that's a suggestion I could give on later, but... Uh, uh, what are you doing to boost FTAs with the different countries for uh, easily uh, promoting exponential growth for uh, services export? See, we are, we are trying to convince government that various countries who are our neighbors, but with whom we have earlier not so close, I mean, healthy relations, we must develop a good healthy relations and start exporting certain things which we are either to not doing. Same, one of the important points is the language barrier. And we have tried to see that, yes, appropriate coaching classes are being given by Institute of Chartered Accountant of India and other institutes so that we can we are in a position to reach them. Giving example of textile, that how Bangladesh and Sri Lanka are, have crossed Indian only because of incentive. Government has realized that non giving of PLA and other incentives to textile, our neighboring countries have surpassed us and government is now working on it. So government has realized that all those areas and countries where either to focus was not there, appropriate attention and allocation of budget should be there. DGFT is hopeful that in FTA, more allocation of money for this purpose will be done. In budget also, there is a larger, for example, in Ayush, if you can see there is a 3,050 crore allocation of budget this year, which is highest in last 70 years. So government is conscious for medical Ayush treatment. Right. So by this way, we are confident that even if Ayurvedic medicine is exported in a larger quantity and awareness is uh, done amongst the patients and recipients, we will be in a position to do well. So if I may, if I may ask you a final question, uh, can you, I mean, it could be a general thing, but can you mention three to four countries if some like if some if an entrepreneur is watching this for a probable opportunity? Which are the three to four countries which are easiest to export with and with lesser red tapeism? See, it is all sector wise. Okay. If you ask me, medical, all our African countries and issue African countries are my best clients. Okay. If you ask me, uh, education, only my three neighboring countries are my best clients. If you ask me, accounting and auditing. USA, UK, Australia, and New Zealand are my base clients. 
Okay. If you ask me tourism, I the whole world is my, I mean, excellent client. What I need is, we have told government repeatedly, and government is also thinking, open up the visa. Government is, as of now, not that liberal in giving online visa, electric visa, or liberal visa. No doubt, infiltration and illegal immigration is a fear in government, and therefore they are conscious, and rightly so. But government is cautious that, yes, liberal visa uh, policy would in turn enhance export in a substantial manner. Right. Well, Mr. Talati, wishing you all the best for your endeavors, and we really hope the target of $350 billion is duly achieved, and uh, we'll soon meet again for your conferences. Wishing you good Thank luck. You so Thank you so much. I think the moment, moment we cross $200 billion, we'll meet again, maybe in six months' time, so that by $350 billion in March after, it will be a great pleasure meeting you again. God willing, sir. God willing. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for joining Thanks. us. Thank you. If you like the video, do like, comment, share, and subscribe.